Doug was really the quintessential 90s Nicktoon. After all, if you grew up in that decade, you probably remember it fondly. Just thinking about Doug, Porkchop, and all their friends in Bluffington probably hits you with a wave of warm nostalgia. And we get it. We're right there with you. So we apologize in advance for these dark theories that might ruin how you look back at it all. What follows is a no-holds-barred look into Doug's life through the lens of hardcore and possibly mentally ill internet theorists. Don't go back there! I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are dark theories about Doug that will ruin your childhood. <laughs> Bud Dink is a predator. Did you ever consider the possibility that there is something just a bit off about Bud Dink? Well, let's start from the beginning when Doug moves to Bluffington. Home sweet home! His new neighbor, Mr. Dink, seems to have some interest in him. But it's just a friendly neighbor being friendly, right? He invites Doug into his house to show him a movie. Okay, fair enough. The next day, Doug goes to the lake to wash a muddy pork chop. Out of nowhere, Mr. Dink shows up in the bushes with a camera. What is this guy doing? Whatever. See you later, Douglas. Doug's lovely neighbor justifies hiding in the bushes by claiming that he tried to get a picture of a nematode. But everybody knows those aren't real. Well, except Doug in the first episode. But we all know what he was actually trying to film. His new young neighbor. And Mr. Dink always invites Doug into his home. For example, he always wants to show him a new, very expensive product. Huh, that's very clever, bud. And think about it. We really don't see most of what's going on inside the house. We never really know what Mr. Dink is doing with Doug. It's definitely not far-fetched to be concerned about why a grown man is constantly inviting a kid into his home. And even lending out expensive equipment that could easily break. Seems like he's trying to buy the kid off. Seriously, somebody needs to call the cops, like, immediately. Someone check this dude's hard drives. It's the latest! Very expensive. Here's the card! And this is just the beginning. Mr. Dink offers Doug to work on projects in his shed. The shed has an awful lot of security measures for a place like Bluffington that doesn't seem to be full of potential criminal activity. Now, in my personal opinion, this guy is without a doubt 100% doing something that he's not supposed to be doing in there. And with all this other evidence, I think we can all guess what that something is. Now, let's just consider Mr. Dink's background as well. He has no kids, he's the scoutmaster of Doug's Bluff Scout Troop? Seriously? This guy is guilty. Get Chris Hansen in here to have this guy take a seat. And if that doesn't look like a red flag, then try to remember the episode where Doug, Skeeter, and Mr. Dink get lost on a canoeing trip. Mr. Dink enters the woods to find the camp, and after some time passes, Doug and Skeeter start to look for him. And oh boy do they find him. He's completely naked. Well, except for his hat, clutching a tree branch in a suggestive position and saying, Sorry boys, I must have lost my pants. Bro, you lost your pants? Arrest this man! Later, he tries to explain, essentially coming up with a nonsensical story about getting his clothes wet and fighting a bear. Tell that excuse to the judge, Mr. Dink. You are guilty, sir. My clothes were soaked, so I laid them out to dry. Doug takes LSD to forget trauma. Yikes, these theories are super dark. What a rabbit hole. This theory builds off the last one about Mr. Naked Scout Troop Leader. After everything that he did to our poor boy, Doug needs a release from these horrific experiences and haunting memories. The confused youngster finds peace in a curious substance that his sister brought home. While it's true that we never really see Doug receiving LSD from Judy, there are many clues in the series suggesting that this is the case. Judy really wants to keep Doug out of her room. If you go in my room, I shall be forced to kill you. Probably, she discovered that Doug took some of her drugs. Just remember the episode about Doug being home alone and sneaking into Judy's room. I mean, come on. Why would Doug sneak into a room that he's seen a million times already, unless he's trying to find some hallucinogenic drugs? That's right, Doug steals some LSD from his sister. 
And let's be real, Judy's 90s grungy dark poetry self is clearly taking drugs. I am reborn. And actually, we get to see the results. According to this theory, we can see both Doug's daydreams and his acid trips. His daydreams are fantastical and really have no effects on the world around him, but his acid trips are more realistic, distorting his surrounding environment. And Doug's interactions with hallucinations are usually noticed by other people. Not convinced yet? When Doug goes camping with the Boy Scouts, Roger asks him to get some firewood. When he's in the woods, the tree next to him starts moving. Then the forest turns colorful and wavy. He starts seeing green creatures. Then he falls down with purple vines suddenly appearing above him. And boom, everything goes back to normal. Doug is on the ground and Roger dangles some rope just in front of his eyes. Everyone laughs at Doug's bad acid trip. That's just one of the examples. Since Doug is so hooked on LSD, he has many trips across different episodes. Some are bad, some are good, but all of these acid trips help him forget what Mr. Dink does to him in secret. That monster. Truly, this looks like a good spot to settle. Doug has serious mental issues. Not all fans believe that Doug is on drugs. Others think that he has serious mental issues. To make it worse, nobody seems to care about this. Just think about the harsh reality. He repeatedly experiences vivid hallucinations that he physically acts out in front of his friends and family, and the latter just laugh it off. How on earth could they do this? These hallucinations have even almost gotten him killed a few times. He blanked out in the middle of a busy street. Or how about the time when he hallucinated while driving a soapbox racer down a hill? Instead of laughing, they should get Doug to a psychiatrist specializing in adolescent psychosis ASAP. Actually, the fans online seem to have already taken care of diagnosing Doug, since he is prone to delusions of grandeur, delusions of guilt, and delusions of reference. We can safely assume that his young brain isn't working as it should be. Allegedly, most of the symptoms point to a manic bipolar disorder. Sorry, Doug, the internet has spoken. Someone get the kid some help. Skeeter has an abusive father. Oh god, poor Skeeter. Hey, it's not that bad. His father is angry all the time. He didn't know about his own IQ before earning a perfect score on the intelligence test. Skeet, you got a perfect score. He seems bent on never actually growing up. That sounds like some major issues at home. And there's more evidence stacking up for psychological abuse. I'd rather drink that than bite my best friend. Skeeter's parents named their kid Mosquito, then constantly lied to him by claiming it's a family name until he started to believe it. There's something seriously wrong with that family. Judy went to school for troubled teens. And what about Judy though? She's a bit different, right? A really high-strung personality that goes hand in hand with overdramatic reactions. In this film, I will be scrupulously honest. She probably has some deep emotional issues. This could actually be one of the reasons why her family kept moving. In the episode where Doug tries to sabotage their float, the school is definitely very far from any regular school. It was even named the Moody School. Now, if you prefer your theories even darker, take Judy's school as a possible glimpse into Doug's high school years. I mean, if he continues to act out all of these hallucinations in the middle of class, the Moody School would probably be the best case scenario for this mentally tortured guy. Honestly, as long as they could keep him away from Mr. Dink, I suppose you could consider it a win. Oh, don't mention it, Douglas. <laughs> Not a word, ever. <laughs> Bluffington is seriously polluted. Bluffington's water supply is the worst in North America. Most of the citizens have blue, green, orange, and purple skin colors. Most likely, the Bluff Corporation dumps toxic waste products into the Lucky Duck Lake. Also, this could easily explain the Lucky Duck monster. This monster is a horrifying byproduct of all the industrial waste that has been dumped into the lake. Even the nematode could have come to life from the ridiculous amount of pollution created by the corporation. While one of the episodes showed a blue man moving in from Bloatsburg, the defendants of the pollution theory brushed it off by saying that this guy could have been born in Bluffington. But we're sticking to the theory as well. 
the citizens of Bluffington have probably been drinking radioactive waste for years. Honestly, we thought this show was a light-hearted coming-of-age story, but in reality, it's a tragic tale of radioactive waste, drugs, mental issues, and Mr. Dink. Oh, just a moment, Douglas. Wait till you get a load of this. Anyway, what do you think? Do any of these theories check out? Do you have any dark theories about Doug of your own? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. But most importantly, someone please call the police. Mr. Dink needs to be stopped.